Welcome to U.S. Corrupt Cops, where we reveal stories that blur the line between authority and abuse of power. In today's episode, corrupt officers thought they could exploit the wrong person, and what unfolds next will astonish you. If you like this video, press 1. On February 15, 2018, at around 4 p.m., Deputy Zach Wester of the Jackson County Sheriff's Office pulled over 52-year-old grandmother Teresa Odom in Mariana, Florida, because her vehicle's brake lights were allegedly flickering rapidly. At the time of the stop, Ms. Odom was on felony probation for dealing in stolen property. After she was pulled over, Deputy Wester approached her driver's side window. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Should I turn in here to get off? You're fine. Uh, You're fine. Uh, Deputy uh, Wester, uh, Jackson County Sheriff's uh, Office. Uh, reason for my stop is um, your brake lights. They work one minute, and the next minute they don't work, and then a few seconds later they just flash, okay? so it's probably because of the rain. Okay, that's fine. You got your driver's license that's on you, ma'am? I just got tickets the other day. I'll be glad to show you. Oh, did you? <laughs> no, you're fine. All right, thank you. I'll be right back. Um, my truck may or may not start. When I turn it off, you may have to push me off, so I'm going to go I, ahead and tell you. Okay. Uh, do you need to turn it off? Do you have to turn it off? It'd be probably better. Okay. I'm going to have a hard time with it as it is. Okay, I'll tell you what. If can we I can't... answer my phone? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can answer your phone. I'm just trying to think what's going to be best for, uh, what is, I mean, it, what is that right there? What is what? That right there. What is what? This? That straw right there. This is not a straw, it's an ink pen. Oh, okay. It's okay. an ink pen. It, it was connected, it looked like it was no connected straw. to that arc. Just hey, hang tight, okay? Hey, I just got okay? pulled over You see my hip give out right then? Good Lord. Look, look, right. you just don't even need to know. <laughs> I've been at the hospital with oh an 84-year-old uncle all mm. day long for three days. Now, okay. So I'm expecting anything I, at this I, point. That would be, yeah, I, I hope everything turns out good with that, all right? It did. Uh, it, it did. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm it sorry. Did. And I'm waiting on Dr. Albrecht to call me. That was another thing I was supposed to tell okay. you. Dr. Albrecht calls and may answer his call. That, yeah, that ain't no problem. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, I'm not going to keep you from talking on the phone, okay? Um, anything that Vic, I need to be concerned about, bombs, hand grenades, Drugs, rocket launchers. No. <laughs> okay. Absolutely not. Okay. All right. Um, Here's what I do probably 10 or 15 times a shift, okay? Um, there's going to be a K-9 coming in a minute, and she's going to walk around the car, okay? But instead of doing that, would you consent to a search of your vehicle? No, You're fine with that? Okay. All right. <laughs> you mind stepping out and just hanging out with this deputy right back here? No, I don't. I just, I'm scared of being in this traffic. To be no. I, deputy Hayke will take care of you. Deputy Wester informs Ms. Odom that a K-9 unit is on the way and requests her consent to search her vehicle. Despite not being required to comply, Ms. Odom agrees to the search. While officers can ask to search a person's home, car, or themselves, individuals have the right to refuse. If someone consents, officers can proceed without probable cause or legal justification. For this reason, defense attorneys often advise declining search requests, as such requests usually signal a lack of authority to search otherwise. Moreover, it's likely a court would find Deputy Wester lacked reasonable suspicion to detain Ms. Odom while awaiting the K-9 unit. In Rodriguez v. United States, 2015, the Supreme Court ruled that extending a traffic stop to wait for a K-9 unit without reasonable suspicion violates the Fourth Amendment. They noted that while certain checks are permissible during a stop, prolonging it without justification isn't allowed. In this case, Deputy Wester had no evidence linking Ms. Odom to drug activity, so detaining her likely lacked reasonable grounds. Can I get take my phone? Yeah, take your phone. I don't care. That's fine. Come on. Hi. How are you? Hi. 2554 to 2540. You can cancel. I got consent. All right, Deputy Hayke, make sure you don't get run over, okay? Because um, I have faith that he look, would I really prefer to get over. <laughs> All right, just hang tight, myself. Here, the body cam footage video shows what appears to be a small baggie in Deputy Wester's hand as he puts on his gloves. It was later proven that Deputy Wester planted methamphetamine in Ms. Odom's vehicle. 
In the body cam footage, Deputy Wester is seen holding a small baggie while putting on his gloves. It was later confirmed that he planted methamphetamine in Ms. Odom's vehicle. Although Florida law doesn't specifically address drug planting by officers, this act violates several state laws. Section 838.022, concerning official misconduct, prohibits public servants from falsifying records to harm others. If Deputy Wester reported the planted drugs in an official document, he could be charged under this statute. Similarly, Section 918.13 makes it illegal to knowingly use false evidence in an investigation, which Wester may have breached by presenting the drugs as legitimate evidence. Additionally, possessing drugs to plant would violate Section 893.13. Planting evidence is illegal and unethical, yet some officers still engage in it. Victims often struggle to defend themselves against such fabricated charges. However, public defenders and criminal defense attorneys can help challenge false evidence, so consulting an attorney before pleading guilty is crucial. Following the setup, Deputy Wester confronts Ms. Odom about the discovered substance. No, direct, sir. On, I'm not going to ask you any direct um, questions. I'm going to read you your rights first, okay? So just hang out with Deputy Hake here. What is it? I have an idea. We're going to test it, though, okay? I don't know. Oh, but... no, Teresa, you're going to jail. <laughs> anything on you, Miss Odom? I said I didn't have anything on me in the truck. Oh, okay. Officer. Oh, okay. But do you have anything on your person? Is what I I'm have asking. nothing on me, to my knowledge, okay. at Thank all. You. We're good. Okay. All right. And I'm not trying to be good. It, it did return presumptive positive for methamphetamine. Okay. I'm just letting you know. Okay. Deputy Wester conducted a field chemical test on a substance he planted, informing Ms. Odom that it tested presumptively positive for methamphetamine. However, roadside field tests are often unreliable. According to the New York Times, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement found that 21% of substances submitted as methamphetamine turned out to be something else, with half of these not being illegal drugs at all. In 2014, Hillsborough County deputies recorded 15 meth false positives due to misinterpretation of color indicators. Environmental factors also influence test accuracy. Cold weather can delay color changes, heat can hasten them and street lighting can distort color perception. Moreover, field tests for substances like cocaine can react similarly to over 80 other compounds, from acne medication to household cleaners. While field tests can't be used as courtroom evidence, they often establish probable cause for arrest. Given that most drug cases end in plea deals, defendants may plead guilty based on these tests alone. In this case, however, Wester's test result wasn't a false positive, as he had intentionally planted methamphetamine in Ms. Odom's car. Um, what about my truck? I'm going to have to tow it, okay, since it's a narcotics felony arrest, okay? They saying they're going to tow my truck, baby. Yep. All right. Here, you just want to put your phone and your sunglasses in your purse here, and we'll make sure all this gets to the jail. Ms. Odom was arrested on charges of methamphetamine possession and drug paraphernalia. 
She spent 19 days in jail before pleading no contest, explaining later that she felt powerless against law enforcement and wanted to care for her three-month-old grandchild. In August 2018, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement launched an investigation into Deputy Wester after the Jackson County Sheriff's Office flagged concerns. Wester, who had been pulling over drivers for minor offenses and planting drugs in their cars, was placed on leave and eventually fired in September. Following a review, charges and convictions were dropped in over 100 of Wester's cases, including Ms. Odom's, which were vacated on September 18, 2018. Wester was arrested in July 2019, facing numerous charges. In 2021, he was convicted on 12 felonies and sentenced to 12.5 years in prison. He has since filed an appeal, and over a dozen of his victims, including Ms. Odom, have filed civil rights lawsuits against him, which remain pending. Wester's actions reveal a disregard for compassion, ethics, and justice, as he abused his position to advance his career, possibly motivated by a desire to join the drug task force his father had led. Ironically, he advised his victims to be careful who you trust, showing deep hypocrisy. Ms. Odom's ordeal demonstrates the need for accountability in law enforcement. Despite her difficult experience, she handled the situation with composure and pursued justice. Next, on October 11, 2022, several officers from the city of La Crosse Police Department attempted to stop 27-year-old Keaton Stein, who was riding a bicycle in La Crosse, Wisconsin. The following footage was captured on the officers' body cameras. You ain't gonna win, buddy. There's more cars coming. Stop the thing. You're gonna have a bike light out. It's just a bike light, you idiot. You wanna get bit? I'll send them right now. Running. That's all it needs. You wanna get bit? You have no bike light. There's an ordinance for that. All you are is looking at tickets. If I have to get out and chase you, you're going to jail automatically. Because you don't have a bike light and you ain't stopping for police. Why, why does it have to go to this dude? Why does it? Because you won't stop. You're the one making the decision, not me. But you need to stop when a cop asks you to stop. Says who? Says the law. Name the law. Obstructing. 946-41, param 1. That's because you don't have a light on your bike. The officer informs Mr. Stein he's stopping him because his bike lacks a light, but Mr. Stein insists the street lights suffice under Section 346.02 of the Wisconsin Statutes, which requires cyclists to follow most traffic rules applied to vehicles. According to Section 340.01, bicycles are classified as vehicles, allowing officers to make stops based on probable cause. Section 347.489 further mandates that bicycles must have a white light during nighttime riding. This implies the officer had grounds to stop Mr. Stein for riding without a light. Additionally, Section 346.04 states that individuals must obey lawful orders from officers. The 2016 State v. Weber case upheld this principle, where the Wisconsin Supreme Court ruled in favor of law enforcement after an individual failed to stop following an officer's commands. Since Mr. Stein verbally responded yet continued riding, a court would likely find he resisted the officer's order. On the ground. Get on the ground. On the ground. Get on the ground. I didn't do right now. On your face. Why don't you listen to it? Why don't you guys listen? I didn't do anything. I already explained it to you. Oh, I didn't have a bike late? All right, chill the out. My arm hurts. Stop resisting that. Please stop. Power hungry cops always trying to with somebody. Guess what, if you would have just pulled over, it wouldn't have gone Guess this way, Guess what, right? if you just off and let me go home, it wouldn't be, none of us would have this problem. Okay, are you injured? Yes! Okay, what hurts? My f***ing shoulder, what do you think? Okay, well we got an ambulance coming. You good? No, my shoulder. Oh, we're gonna look at it. Alright, what's your name? None of your business. Alright, well, you can just go to jail. No For what? For resisting now. How do you figure? How do you figure? Because you didn't stop. I got out of my I car don't need to, to stop. stop. Yes, I wasn't f***ing doing anything. The only thing I was going to do is stop you and write you a warning for not having a bike A light. warning for not having a bike light? Really? You have nothing better to be doing. Nope, this is the best as it gets. Dude, what's your name? Do you have an ID on you? In your pocket? We're going to have to search you anyways. Is it in there? I don't answer questions. 
Right. Easy on the f***ing shoulder. I'm gonna laugh too when he ain't finding nothing that you obviously seem to think you're finding. No, I'm gonna search you before you go to jail is all. Go to jail for what? Resisting, possibly wow. causing injury now. Oh, causing injury? Yeah, the other officer needs medical attention. Oh, he so. needs medical attention for yeah. what? Do you have know. asthma? I haven't talked to him. The officer informs Mr. Stein that he's going to jail for resisting and may face charges for causing injury to the officer who tackled him. Wisconsin's resisting and obstructing statute, section 946.41, states, Whoever knowingly resists or obstructs an officer, while such officer is doing any act in an official capacity and with lawful authority, is guilty of a Class A misdemeanor. According to Wisconsin jury instructions, resisting involves opposing an officer by force or threat of force while obstruction means the defendant's actions prevent or make more difficult the performance of the officer's duties. In the Weber case, the Wisconsin Supreme Court held that law enforcement had probable cause to arrest a defendant for resisting when he failed to stop after an officer activated emergency lights. Based on this precedent, a court would likely conclude that Mr. Stein resisted by refusing to stop, acknowledging the officer's attempts but not complying. Additionally, he could be convicted of resisting causing injury, as the officer suffered a separated shoulder during the tackle. Section 9, 146.41 further states that if resisting or obstructing causes substantial bodily harm or a soft tissue injury to an officer, it's a Class H felony. A separated shoulder involves ligament tears, fitting the definition of a soft tissue injury. However, it's debatable whether Mr. Stein's actions legally caused the injury since the officer was hurt by his own action in tackling Mr. Stein, not by any force from Mr. Stein. The jury instructions define cause as the Defendant's Act being a substantial factor in producing harm. In State v. Bartlett, 1989, the court applied the substantial factor test, holding that a fleeing suspect could be held responsible for injuries to pursuing officers even without direct involvement. The court noted that responsibility lies with those who precipitate the need for a chase, and this isn't negated by any negligence on the pursuer's part. However, they also stated the harmful result must be the natural and probable consequence of the accused's conduct. Based on this analysis, a court might determine that Mr. Stein's refusal to stop was the cause of the officer's injury as it necessitated the use of force. Conversely, it could conclude that the officer's decision to tackle was too remote to be considered a natural and probable consequence of Mr. Stein's actions. Sit down, please. I'm not going anywhere, obviously. Yes. My name's Keaton. What's it say on the ID? Sorry. Why did you choose to be a cop? Hey, I gotta say, you feel like you're like doing uh, like good for the greater good or something? Like what? I don't know what you should run from the police. Do you feel like you're because doing I don't good? trust the police. Look at all the people getting shot by police for walking. Oh yeah, just for walking. Yeah, just for walking. Don't even have any warrants, bonds, anything. Exactly. You decided to run. That was pretty. Because stupid, I had wasn't no it? reason not to. You had no reason not to. Yeah, meaning or I. You just had every reason to just hop out and say, "Hey, what's going on?" I would have wrote you your warning. Because you been I, on your yet way again, to. I don't with cops. I have no quarrel with y'all motherfuckers, and y'all shouldn't have any with me. I don't have any with you. Go you do, you apparently. No, yes, this is you all you. You, you, refuse to, you refuse to obey a lawful because command. Because who the are you? I go give a less if you got a badge or not, dude. You ain't no better than me. I never said I was You're better than you. You're not my mother father or my mom. Well, I'm glad because I'd be pretty disappointed. You know what? I know what the f*** that, that was like, dude, so f*** yourself. What's your name? Officer LeBrec. Get bent. I just got f sacked off my bike. Is your shoulder dislocated? You shouldn't have f***ing tackled me. Is it I didn't do to him, and I'm gonna get catch a charge for it. Yep. Well, right. this whole this whole situation could have been avoided. Yeah, if this just whole situation stopped. could have been avoided. He could have been on doing something worth the time. I told you this is as good as it gets, bro. This is as good as it gets. Somebody on a bike. Yep. Find a new job. Can I please ride with you? You're like the only one who's been cool. I'm sorry for like no, whatever. You really can't transport. Really? No. I mean, he's making the arrest. It's not a felony charge, right? It is a felony charge. Are you serious, dude? You realize how badly that me, right? Well, I'm not the one that chose to run from the place. Yeah, you, whoever the- I swear to God, if this charge doesn't get dropped, that, that's it. Like, my life is basically over. Great. Mr. Stein claims that a felony conviction will ruin his life. Beyond longer prison sentences and higher fines, 
Felony convictions typically have more severe negative impacts on daily life than misdemeanors. Even after serving time, collateral consequences, legal and regulatory restrictions can severely limit opportunities. According to the National Inventory of Collateral Consequences of Conviction, these repercussions can block access to employment, occupational licensing, housing, voting, education, and other rights and benefits. The American Bar Association's Collateral Consequences of Criminal Convictions, Judicial Bench Book, notes that such consequences may include ineligibility for public benefits like food stamps and government-sponsored student loans, and disqualification from providing foster care to family members. In Wisconsin, individuals serving any part of a felony sentence, including probation or parole, are ineligible to vote and must re-register once their sentence is complete, unlike those with misdemeanor convictions who remain eligible. Additionally, Wisconsin prohibits felons from possessing firearms and holding public office. These rights can only be restored by a pardon. While Wisconsin law limits when employers can consider an applicant's conviction record, they can refuse to hire if the conviction is substantially related to the job. Similarly, occupational licenses can be denied or revoked on the same grounds, and some licenses can be denied if the individual has any felony conviction. Given the particularly harsh collateral consequences of a felony conviction, Mr. Stein is likely correct that being charged with a felony would have a more negative impact on his life than a misdemeanor charge. Oh, you don't have a line on your bike! Congratulations, now you're You didn't step, man. Right? You didn't step. Are you the one that said that about if you were my dad, you'd be disappointed too? I just said I'd be disappointed if I was your parent. Well, yeah. that's not... I didn't ask for your opinion as far as that's concerned. It's pretty f***ed up. Okay, well, I... You should I... be very careful what you say to people. You don't okay. know their situation or their story. You're right, I don't. I apologize. Thanks. Uh, it really f***ed up my right side too. What's that? It feels like my kidneys or okay, well, we're going to the hospital, so they'll check you out down there and make sure everything's yeah, good. Yeah, let's hope. After Mr. Stein was arrested, the injured officer was taken to a local hospital and diagnosed with a separated shoulder. Mr. Stein was also transported to a hospital where he was medically cleared before being taken to the La Crosse County Jail. Mr. Stein was charged with felony resisting an officer causing substantial bodily harm or soft tissue injury, misdemeanor disorderly conduct and operating a bicycle without lights during hours of darkness. As of the date of this episode, the charges against Mr. Stein are still pending. Overall, the lacrosse officers receive a C plus because, although they maintained a professional and respectful demeanor throughout the interaction and likely stayed within the bounds of their legal authority, I question whether tackling Mr. Stein off his bicycle was truly necessary especially given that he was being stopped for a minor traffic violation. Both the officer and Mr. Stein claimed to be injured during the use of force. However, courts have consistently held that officers are not required to use the least intrusive means available. Since Mr. Stein had repeatedly refused to stop voluntarily, a court would likely conclude that tackling him to prevent his flight was not unreasonable or excessive under the Fourth Amendment. Similarly, I disagree with the officer's decision to pursue a felony resisting causing injury charge against Mr. Stein on somewhat tenuous legal grounds, based merely on the fact that an officer happened to injure his shoulder after choosing to tackle Mr. Stein. While it's indisputable that Mr. Stein's flight was a but-for cause of the officer's injury, it also seems clear that Mr. Stein wasn't trying to physically injure anyone. In my opinion, Choosing to charge him with a felony offense seems vindictive and spiteful. All that said, the officers didn't commit any blatant constitutional violations and appeared to remain within their authority throughout the video. Mr. Stein gets an F for repeatedly refusing to stop for a lawful traffic stop, likely violating state eluding and resisting statutes, and maintaining a disrespectful and defiant demeanor throughout the encounter. Mr. Stein made it clear that his refusal to stop stemmed from his general lack of respect for law enforcement officers. While he's entitled to his feelings about police officers, the unavoidable truth is that the law requires him to comply with their orders in certain situations. Although I understand Mr. Stein's concerns about the pettiness of this offense, the law is clear that officers can stop and, in some cases, even arrest individuals for such minor offenses. 
For this reason, I would encourage Mr. Stein to reconsider his blanket refusal to acknowledge police commands. He doesn't find reasonable or worth his time, or else he will continue to find himself in situations like this one. Thanks for watching US Corrupt Cops. If you enjoyed today's story, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more eye-opening content. Stay tuned, stay informed, and remember, justice always finds a way.